Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznus here, and welcome to my hard mode arch glacier guide for beginners for all styles. Now this guide will work anywhere between 0% and all the way to 1000% in rage. Now before we start this guide, I want to go over my credibility. This is something I'm starting to do in my guides so the viewers know that I have experience with the guide I'm making, and you can be sure that the information I'm telling you comes from a place of experience. So for me, with the Arch Glacier, it is one of my favorite bosses and I have almost 500 hard mode kills and I've reached over 1000% in rage at the boss. I have also done some kills with each style but I mainly have used range. I have experience in streaking and have streaked all the way from 0% to 1000% in rage in one streak so I'm pretty consistent at the boss now and think I have a pretty good understanding from 0 to 1000%. With that said, let's go into the recommendations stats for the Arch Glacier, I would recommend having 90 plus combat stats for the Arch Glacier. I would also recommend having 95 prayer for soul split and for turmoils. It's really important to have soul split, especially going into the higher enrages. I would also highly recommend having level 96 herbler for overloads and also having some adrenaline potions unlocked as well. And 96 summoning for a Ripper Demon or Pachyak is very, very good. You can, however, use a War Tortoise at level 67 summoning as well. Also, having perked out armor and weapons is is highly recommended so invention unlocked and having perks on your armor and weapons is also very important. So now we'll be talking about the mechanics you'll need to know or be prepared to learn for the Arch Glacier. Now knowing how to prayer flick is a very very important mechanic for maintaining your health but also to avoid dying at higher enrages. Being able to swap from soul split to protection prayers is highly important for the Arch Glacier if you're planning to go to high enrage. Knowing and being familiar with using defensive abilities is very useful, especially when going up to higher enrages. So being familiar with abilities like Debilitate, Devotion, and Resonance will help you a lot at the Arch Glacier. So now we're going to talk about the boss and its loot or enrage system. Now the Arch Glacier is an Elder God Wars boss that is susceptible to the Hex Hunter bow. It's a boss where you can trigger on and off mechanics and do normal mode and hard mode. However, this guide is going to be focusing on doing hard mode with all the mechanics enabled. The Arch Glacier has a unique enrage and streak system very similar to Telos. The Arch Glacier starts at 0% enrage and it can be fought all the way up to 4000%. During these enrage increases, the Arch Glacier goes from 370k health all the way to 3.3 million. His special attacks will also gain different effects and HP as you can see by this chart. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to see the scaling for each enrage and each mechanic. So we're going to be focusing on 0% to 1000% for this guide. Now the Arch Glacier also has a streak system which after each kill you can continue your streak. This will raise your enrage and it will also risk your loot. If you die, your loot will be drastically decreased and you'll lose a lot of it. However, if you do manage to get to a 15 kill streak, you will then keep 75% of your loot if you die. You can also claim your loot after any kill. Streaking is an amazing way to get more GP per hour, as common loot will scale up to absurd amounts during kill streaks. We are also not sure how much that streaks affect unique loots, but we are pretty sure that streaks do affect the amount of Dark Nylas that you get. The higher your streak, the more Dark Nylas you'll get, which is a very important piece of crafting the tier 95s. So in terms of loot from the Arch Glacier, the Glacier drops a ton of different supplies and resources which drastically increase while you're streaking. For rare drops, the Glacier will drop Dark Nylas and the Core of Lang, which can be fused together with 10 Nylas and 1 Core to make the new Tier 95 dual wield melee weapons. So the loot works similar to Araxor and Telos, as in you're creating the weapons from untradeable drops. You can also get something like the Scripture of Wen and the Lang Artifact. But all in all, the Arch Glacier is very, very profitable boss mainly while streaking. Now that you know about the boss, let's get into some of the recommended gear, familiars, and stuff like that for your setups. 
So in terms of the best familiars to use at the Glacor, the Ripper Demon is by far with Death From Above scrolls the best, as it can really help you with your all around damage and it's the familiar I recommend the most. However, using a Beast of Burden, especially when learning at higher in Rage, can really help you get a grasp on the boss, so something like a Pack Mammoth or Pack Yak is very good, or a Tortoise if you're lower level summoning. Next, in terms of auras, this is where the boss really shines. Accuracy is not a huge problem at all here compared to other bosses, so you can use a ton of different auras effectively. Reckless Maniacal Berserker auras are some of the best auras to use here for damage. However, the Inspiration aura is very good and a lesser known aura, and it gives you extra adrenaline for successful attacks, and it's really, really good. The Majrat aura is very good here as well. And Dark Magic is also a very good option. You have a ton of choices for auras at this boss, which is super nice, and it makes it so you really don't need any aura refreshes ever when doing the Glacier. Lastly, I want to talk about the Shadow Pontifex Ring. This ring is restored after completing the City of Sentizen quest and when charged with Resonant Anima of Wen, which you can get from either killing the Glacier boss or you can buy it off the GE. You unlock the special effect that increases the effectiveness of your protection prayers and curses against the Glacier by 10%. This is extremely, extremely good and it's needed and a must have upgrade when you're going for high and rage on the arch glacier it also works from the bank so you do not need to wear it for the special effect this is super important and i highly 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 recommend everyone to get this before trying to do the arch glacier above like 500 percent in rage so now we're going to start with all our gear and inventory setups i'll have a high level setup and then a beginner setup feel free to look in the description for the timestamps for each setup and feel free to pause the screen and read and you know check back in and make your own setup based on this but I'll just go through it quickly here um, so for the ranged high level setup we have serenic armor we've got essence of finality with a debo in it we've got fleeting boots reavers ring ascension crossbows cinderbane gloves because the boss is poisonable so cinderbanes are very very good we've got a kiln cape we've got a scripture of when which is my personal favorite thing to use here the grimoire might be a little bit better but in terms of expense you know scripture of when is a very very strong here because the glacier does not move um, at all so it always hits uh, ruby with criminal bolts as well for our bolts for our inventory we have the Saren god bow the spec is absolutely overpowered here so it's an amazing thing to have so i would highly recommend a Saren god bow enhanced excalibur planted feet switch ring of vigor mech chinchampas which are used for killing the minions and don't worry we'll go over killing the minions later vulnerability bombs a shield i've got a sender hydrix bolts which are also really good here you don't need them however we've got luck of the dwarves weapon poison plus 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 is extremely good you obviously don't have to bring this in your inventory you can drink it beforehand but i just have it here we've got adrenaline potion make sure to just use the best adrenaline potion you can overloads use the best overloads you can we've got ceridome and bruise and spiritual prayers and then of course the rest of the inventory is filled with food you can use sailfish you can use blubber jellyfish you know really whatever you want so moving on to the range beginner setups these setups are pretty bare bones so you can kind of add on what you want if you have a better weapon you know obviously use that if you have worse armor you could try with that these are kind of just like the bare bones setup that i would recommend so first we have pernix armor we've got amulet of souls which uh, is kind of an important item so i would recommend having an amulet of souls um, if you're planning on doing higher in rages at least, uh, Essence of Finality obviously is even better. Uh, you've got the Kiln Cave, Ruby the Criminal Bolts, a Wyvern Crossbow, Ascension Grips, Ring of Death, and the Illuminated Book of Law is actually a very good budget pocket slot item here. I would honestly use this over a Scrimshaw, so it's very good and much cheaper. And then for the inventory, we have Overloads, Enhanced Excalibur, we've got Emerald the Criminal Bolts, Weapon Poison, in plus 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 uh, we've got mechanized chinchampas we've got uh, planted feet switch we've got ring of vigor shield vulnerability bombs spiritual prayer potions serotonin and bruise and then food of your choice now moving on to the magic high level setup we have tectonic armor essence of finality kiln cape rune pouch Praisal Wand and Imperium Core. Of course, you can use other weapons like the Staff of Suske. The Inquisitor Staff, however, does not work here. 
Um, we've got Blast Diffusion Boots, Cinderbane Gloves, Chandler's Ring, or you can use a Reaver's Ring, and the Scripture of When. As for our inventory, generally the same. We've got Overload, Enhanced Excalibur, Weapon Poison, plus, plus, plus. We've got Rune Pouch, Ring of Vigor, and then we also have a Saren Godbow because if you do have Ingenuity to Humans, you can also use the Saren Godbow spec with Magic or Melee, so Saren Godbow is super good here, so that might be worth it. We've got an Adrenaline Pot, Planet Feet, Vitality Potion, which you can also bring if you would like with range or any setup. Up. This kind of helps uh, if you mess up a certain mechanic that we'll get into. We've got a shield, we've got food, we've got vulnerability bombs, bruise, spiritual prayers, and luck of the dwarves. Moving on to the magic beginner setup, we've got Virtus Armor, we've got the Illuminated Book of Law as our pocket slot, Kiln Cape, Amulet of Souls, Rune Pouch, Obliteration, but of course you can use like a Chaotic Staff, you can use a Noxious Staff, we've got Celestial Hand Wraps, um, however if you do have Cinderbane Gloves, even if you're a beginner, those are best in slot here, you definitely want to use those, but since they're so expensive, I didn't include them in the beginner setup. We have Blast Diffusion Boots and then a Ring of Death, which obviously is good for beginners. So for the inventory, we've got Overloads, Enhanced Exc Excalibur, Weapon Poison, Rune Pouch, Ring of Vigor, Adrenaline Pot, Planted Feet, Vitality Potion, Shields, Food, Vulnerability Bombs, Ceridome and Bruise, Spiritual Prayers, and Luck of the Dwarves. Generally the same inventory for most of these setups. Moving on to the high level melee setup, we've got Trimmed Masterwork as our armor. We've got the Scripture of When, but you can also use a Vampirism Scrimshaw, depending if you want health or or damage. Uh, Grimoire, like I said, is also probably the best here, although much more expensive to use. We've got the Kiln Cape, Essence of Finality, the Dual Wield Kopeshes, if you have the new tier 95s, of course, use those, Cinderbane Gloves, and Reaver's Ring. As for the inventory, a little bit different here with the high level of melee. We've got Overloads, Enhanced Excalibur, Weapon Poison, plus, plus, plus. We've got the Zero's God Sword for the special attack, the Ring of Vigor, the Noxious Scythe, which is basically what we'll be using to kill the minions. Adrenaline Potions, we've got the Masterwork Spear of Annihilation, which is also really good as a switch. We've got the Vitality Potion, Shield, Vulnerability Bomb, Serodome and Bruise, Spiritual Prayers, and finally, Luck of the Dwarves. All right, and then finally, we've got the Melee Beginner setup. So we have Normal Masterwork Armor, the Vampirism Scrimshaw, which is really good for beginners as well to keep your HP up. We've got Kiln Cape, Amulet of Souls, Noxious Scythe, Laceration Boots, and Ring of Death. You can also also use the laceration boots with the high level setup if you'd like to as well. We've got for the inventory overloads, enhanced scalibur, weapon poison, ring of vigor, adrenaline potion. We've got drygore dual wields, which are for a switch, and you can also use to blade a dive. You can bring a blade a dive switch for basically every setup if you'd like. I personally don't use blade a dive, but it can be very useful, so we'll talk about that later. We've got the vitality potion, shield, vulnerability bombs, ceridome and bruise, spiritual prayers, sailfish, and finally luck of the door. So that's going to do it for all the setups and inventories. So six different setups. Of course, you can add your own stuff um, if you, you know, have certain items and stuff. But yeah, those are the setups. All right, so first we're going to go over all the mechanics from the Arch Glacier, and I'll go over the higher enraged tips and strategies afterwards. So for the Arch Glacier, the boss has five different mechanics. Since this guide is for all five enabled, we'll talk about them all, of course. Basically, the Arch Glacier cycles through a set of five different mechanics, which are random every single time. Mechanics can repeat twice in a row, but no more than that. So for instance, you can get minions spawning twice in a row, but you you can't get them for a third time in a row. The Arch Glacier primarily attacks with magic and that's what you'll be praying when you first go into the fight. So Creeping Ice is the main mechanic that cannot be toggled off. Basically this is ice that will slowly approach the player from either side of you and it will force you into a designated area of the arena. The spots that Creeping Ice pushes you are actually used to predict which special attack is coming from the Arch Glacier. This is how you can be ready for the special attacks before they happen since they're random and you can't remember a set order like something you can like Telos. So first we're going to go over how to see all of the attacks coming and then we'll go more in depth on how to deal with them. 
So first up is the Pillars of Ice attack, which the Creeping Ice will start coming at you from the left side of the arena only. And then the Pillars will spawn once the ice reaches its end. Here is how it looks on the arena. Now the red rectangle signifies the creeping ice that forms and then the green circle is the open area that you'll be dealing with the special attacks and fighting the Glacier in. After this we have the frost cannon special attack which can come at you from three different points in the arena. The first point is when the ice starts forming from both sides at once and it traps you near the middle of the arena but slightly more left than being in the exact middle. This can be tough to tell compared to the other frost cannons. The second version of the frost cannon will start coming at you from the left first and then come from the right and you'll be towards the right side of the arena for this version of the frost cannon. The third and final version of the frost cannon is basically the inverse of the one we just talked about. The ice, the ice will start coming at you from the right first and then from the left, keeping you to the left side of the arena. For the exposed core special attack, the creeping ice will come from you at both sides at the same time, trapping you right in the middle of the arena as shown here. This is very very easy to tell when this one is happening. For the flurry special attack, the creeping ice will come at you from both sides just like the exposed core, but it will hardly cover any of the arena at all and you'll have a very big wide open space and this will signify the flurry special is coming. You'll also get a text box that says the Glacier is enraged basically. Keep in mind that if you ever get hit by any of the creeping ice, you will be knocked back and dealt damage, so moving to the designated area as the ice is coming is very, very important. Alright, so now we're going to go over the basics of each special attack and how to deal with them all. So first is going to be the Flurry special attack. Now this attack makes the Arch Glacier become enraged and focus his attacks. This means his attacks become more powerful and he also uses different styles. He will switch between the Mage and Ranged and Melee attacks. You'll need to switch your prayers to deal with these attacks. This is a special you can deal a lot of damage to the Arch Glacier during since it lasts for a good while and it's just basically prayer flicking with little movement. Here is what the ranged attack looks like. One arm is lifted up and green acid appears around the Glacier's arm. This is pretty easy to spot because you'll see the green acid and you'll know that means ranged. For a magic attack it's basically the same thing but with blue forming around the Glacier's arm. This is the most basic attack and pretty easy to recognize as as well. Lastly, we have the melee attack, which the Arch Glacier will drag his arm over to one side and swipe it across the floor. This is his melee attack, and it's honestly pretty easy to recognize as well. Basically, the Flurry special is all about switching prayers, and if you need to, you can soul split as well in between the hits to regain health. This is also a decent time to Sunshine or Death Swiftness because the special attack lasts for a while. Next up, we have the Glacite Minions. The Arch Glacier will lift his arms up into the air, and a shield will appear in front of him, which renders him basically immune to damage. He will then launch four projectiles, which spawn four minions. Two will be magic, and two will be melee. However, when you get to 250% in Rage or higher, he will spawn 5 minions with an added bolstered Glacite with double the hit points of a normal one. During this mechanic, you'll want to kill the minions as soon as possible so you can start damaging the Arch Glacier again. Remember that eventually the Arch Glacier will continue doing special attacks even if you don't kill the minions fast enough, so you'll be dealing with the minions while the Glacier is doing more special attacks if it takes you too long. For this, the easiest way to kill the minions with each style is as follows. For ranged, you'll want to equip your mechanized chinchampas, you'll want to run up to the minions and use a bleed on them, and then once the bolstered Glacite is nearby, by, you will want to binding shot on the minions to stun them all together. Then the easiest way to kill them all is to use your Debo spec from your Essence of Finality. Or you can use something like Snapshot if you don't have an EOF. For magic it's generally the same, you'll want to basically do the same thing, bleed, but this time use detonate with blast diffusion boots to take out the minions really easily. For melee, you'll want to use something like a scythe or a weapon with AoE and then use quake or hurricane and AoE abilities. That's the easiest way to deal with the minions with melee. Once the minions are dead, you'll be able to go back to damaging the Glacier. 
Next we have the Frost Cannon Special Attack. Now this is a special attack where the Arch Glacier will turn into a cannon and fire an ice cannon at you. This deals 3 hits of 10k damage in hard mode and it also applies a 6 second stun. The easiest way to deal with this mechanic is to use Anticipate before the attack comes and then use Devotion ability with Magic Prayer and you'll take no damage whatsoever. However, things can get a bit tricky if you get the Frost Cannon twice in a row or you aren't prepared or don't have Devotion for some reason. If this happens, Devotion won't be off cooldown if you get it twice in a row. And to deal with this special attack, there are a few different ways you can go about it. The first one is to anticipate and then reflect and debilitate. This will allow you to generally survive the hits. You can also throw in a resonance in there. Disruption shield will also block one hit and drinking a vitality potion is also a good way to deal with this. As long as you know the Frost Cannon is coming and you have enough adre adrenaline for devotion, this is probably the easiest mechanic to deal with. Next is the exposed core mechanic. You'll be in the center of the arena and the Arch Glacier will pull out his arms and bring out the exposed core. The Arch Glacier is invincible during this mechanic and you need to kill one of his arms to move on. You will be dealt magic damage every tick until you destroy an arm. The damage will increase the longer you go without killing an arm. It's generally worth it to use soul split here, but praying magic is useful if it's taking you too long, as well as the use of devotion as a last resort. The Glacier's arms can also be flanked. This, in my opinion, is the absolute best time to use an ultimate like Death Swiftness or Sunshine. Using an ultimate during this mechanic gives you a moment to collect yourself and build up some adrenaline and then threshold down the arm. After this, you'll still have the ultimate up and can start dealing more damage to the boss. So finally, we have the Pillars of Ice. The Arch Glacier will spawn beams of ice that will follow you around and deal you massive damage if touched. If you touch a pillar, you will take typeless damage each tick. Things like Resonance and Reflect will not negate the damage, only Barricade will, but is usually used just as a last resort. The pillars follow a fixed pattern. You'll see a lightning strike come down from the Arch Glacier and the first pillar will spawn on the right end of the arena. Then a bit later, right before the creeping ice is gone, the second pillar will spawn and then the third pillar will spawn in the middle of the arena in hard mode after the creeping ice has disappeared. There are a few ways to go about to avoid this and I will show you the way that I use now and then a little bit of a better way using bladed dive. So the first way is I follow this pattern. I basically surge up to the right corner after the first pillar spawns. I then wait until the pillar gets close to me and then I run down to the edge of the creeping ice. After this, I attack the Glacier and then I surge through the second pillar. I'll then wait until the creeping ice spawns and then I'll run up to near melee distance of the Glacier in the middle of the arena. The pillars will disappear before they can touch you if you run to the right spot. This is an easy method to do with either surge or double surge and has been good for me all the way up to 1k in rage. But you can also use bladed dive as well and here is a map of how the method works. So the same basic thing, you run to the, type, the top right corner of the arena but now instead you bladed dive down and to the left where the creeping ice cuts off. Then you'll walk a few steps and surge through the pillars. Then you'll walk up and to the right like we did. It's very simple and bladed dive makes it even more fluid. But as I showed in the clip, you can get by it without bladed dive if needed. So now that we know all the mechanics, I'll go over a few tips for the higher enrages. As enrage gets higher, things are going to hit harder and you won't be able to survive many mistakes at all. For the flurry mechanics, the shadow pontifex ring, prayer absorption, and an essence of finality is going to really decrease the amount of damage you take. Also utilizing resonance on the flurry hits can heal you all the way up to full in one resonance at higher in rage and it's a very good thing to do basically to use little to no food. So once you're close to a thousand percent in rage you can also make use of like debilitate during the flurry attacks if you're getting hit too much through prayer. 
something else to note with flurry is that it can be very very dangerous if the minions come right after flurry finishes if this happens then you may be tempted to start attacking the minions right away but the arch glacier can still use ranged or melee attacks for a few hits after flurry finishes and the minions come the minion spawning attack can also sometimes hide the animation so you can't see which type of attack is coming next and that can lead to death very easily the best way to deal with this interaction is to reflect or debilitate if you get the mechanics in this order at a higher in rage. Using vulnerability bombs on the boss can also be a bit tricky, so here is how I use a vuln bomb on the boss. Basically you need to throw it right in front on the platform and right clicking as you do it makes it much easier. So now that we're done with all the mechanics and the tips, I'm going to show you a full kill that I did over a thousand percent in rage.
So that's going to do it for this Arch Glazer guide for beginners up to a thousand percent in rage. You should be able to very easily get Iceborne title and then even higher up to a thousand percent with everything you learned in this video. And I plan on using most of these tactics to get up to two thousand percent to hopefully get the silver Iceborne title soon. If this guide helped you out, make sure to leave a like. I spent a ton of time on it, so I hope it helped you. And make sure to subscribe if you want more boss guides as well. I'm starting to put a lot more out so if you want some of that make sure to subscribe and yeah thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you in the next video